Each year for, I want to say, um, well over 25 years, um, we have presented here at Midway a Laity Service Award. Um, and there's a process to go through in order to um, find the recipients. And some of the criteria, I just wanted to read that to you, um, is that the recipient is a member of the local church or charge. The recipient exemplifies a commitment to the, to <clears throat> the Christian way of life and the recipient's contributions to the life of the church and the community reflects a devotion to self-service, a, a devotion to self and to service of others. Um, and it's always sometimes the, the number of nominations we get in such a hard um, thing to decide who to give um, this award to. Um, Joey and I are honored and pleased to be able to present two awards today. You want me to go first? Yeah, um, I got it, that's good, okay. So the first one, um, this recipient has been a Hedy Womble chairperson for many years. She served in finance and education committee, has been the past chairperson for the administrative board. She's a faithful member of the Jim Harkins Faith Matter Sunday School class. Nancy is an active supporter of many missions locally and worldwide. She has been a volunteer at the Opportunity House for many years and also has helped write grants. Nancy makes sure that one of our very special church members um, gets here every single Sunday. She's also um, actively visiting shut-ins and she currently sits on the Family Ministries Committee. So Nancy, if you would come forward. Um, I also just want to add, um, Nancy, her profession um, has been in the Department of Corrections, which she retired from for 30 years. Um, she's very active in um, training law enforcement officers, also in suicide prevention. So she, she reaches out not only in our church, but to members of the community. So congratulations. And this year, as in the several years past, we will be having a second recipient of the award this year. Sometimes we just have so many wonderful, talented, godly people in our church that we just have trouble picking just one. And this year we had several nominations come in for this person. This person is on the Stewardship Committee, the Administrative Council, the Board of Directors of the Opportunity House. He is a Narrowgate volunteer and cooks every Thursday, every week, very active in both the contemporary and traditional services. He attends a prayer meeting every week that we have on Tuesday morning faithfully. Some would call him the local church handyman. He fixes and cleans up around the church and its facilities. He volunteers and helps out on the worship committee. He sets up for communion and changes the vestments. He keeps the sanctuary in order and up to date with the latest decorations and pyramids. He always is available to lend a hand and help no matter what the ministry is. Faithfully, he supports the church with his tithes, gifts, presents, prayers, and service. He is also the chairman of the board of directors for the Opportunity House. He is continually volunteering his time and resources to help the Opportunity House operate on a daily basis. He serves as the voice and the ambassador for the Opportunity House. Daily, he completes tasks and chores at hand for the Opportunity House, and he also brightens everyone's day. That was written by somebody else, not me, by the way. But she does brighten my day every day, too, but. He gathers supplies and transports goods weekly for the Opportunity House. For the narrow gate services, he purchases the food, the supplies, and volunteers also as a cook, stays and helps cleans up every week to feed those who are living on the fringe and those who are also sometimes homeless. He also bl builds bluebird houses for his friends and neighbors, as well as helps maintains them, helps to maintain them. He helps all the neighbors in the community, especially the widows, with everything from pest control to shoveling driveways. This gentleman also played a key role in getting the Special Olympics started in Cabarrus County. He goes out of his way to be friendly and approachable to people who need it the most, especially those outside the church and those in the community. Faithfully, endlessly, and tirelessly, he serves the Lord with his whole heart and a, with a contagiously joyful and humble disposition. 
Ron Atkins exemplifies a commitment to the Christian way of life and contributes to the life of our church and our community. He truly loves the Lord and lets that love show in the quality and the abundance of the work that he is always doing for our Lord and Savior, humbly in the background and often overlooked. Truly, Ron Atkins is a model Christian, and we have chosen you today for the other recipient of the award. And that is it for this morning, folks, unless anybody else has any other announcements. If not, let us go to God and worship. Thank you. Eleven verses seven through ten. Now I'm going to read the scripture, but when we get down to the parentheses, if you would please say the scripture along with us. It'll start off with Hosanna. That'll be your cue. And when you say Hosanna, you got to wave your palm branches up in the air. <laughs> Mark, seven, Mark chapter 11, 7 through 10. They brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat upon it. Many people spread their cloaks their, on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who were following were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of David, our ancestor, Hosanna in the highest. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. They were trying to get my attention back there, and I was trying to figure out what in the world are they trying to say? They were trying to tell me to get the children back there so the children could come up with them, and, and I just could not figure out. He was you know, trying to figure out what. what could not figure out what in the world that was. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Today, we're honored to have some baptisms and people joining the church. So I'm going to ask Don and Janice and Jessica and Lincoln to come forth at this time. And I'm going to ask you if you would stand right here. And anyone that would like to come and stand with them is invited to do so. Now, some of what we're going to be saying will be on the screen. Some of it will not be on the screen, but that's all right because you got me. And we'll figure out what's going on. All right. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated in God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through the water and the spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Today, we present Don and Lincoln for baptism. Now, I'm gonna ask some questions. This is for the parents and for those standing with them. Um, and it's, you're also saying it for yourself because you're being baptized. All right. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. If you do, please say, I do. Everyone else? All right. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If you do, please say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. If you do, please say, I do. Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example, he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself and profess his faith openly to lead the Christian life? If you will, please say, I will. According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? If you will, please say, I will. I will. Now I ask this to the whole congregation. Do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life 
and include this child now before you in your care. With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround this person with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his trust of God and be found faithful in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and the New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through the water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus, nurtured in the womb of water of the womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection. You gave you, and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations, his glory among all people. Pour out your Holy Spirit and bless this gift of water and those who receive it to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness through their, their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may find their final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Don, I baptize thee in the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you, if you would, to put your hands on mine or on him. May the Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. This is a very important piece of puzzle. Oh, yeah. Come here. <laughs> hey, buddy. He's not going to let that go. What name is given this child? Lincoln James Holman. Lincoln James. I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you, if you would, to place your hands on him, on me. May the Holy Spirit work within you, that being born of the water and the Spirit, you may become a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Man, we're going to show him around, wouldn't it?
Let's welcome our newest brothers in Christ. Members of this household of God, I commend to you this gentleman and this child to your love and your care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect, perfect them in love. Let me ask you a question. I'm, don't worry about that on the screen. I'm not going to go with that while. Will you do all in your power to uphold these two people in your love? Will you show them what it means to be part of a Christian church? Will you show them what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? If you will do that, please say, I will. I will. Congratulations. You're now a member of this church. And we have placed uh, you on the uh, membership role as well. And we have placed you on the membership role as well. May God be with y'all. May God protect y'all. May God continue to work with you. It's okay. And we will continue to work with this young one so that he will grow as a disciple in Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you to welcome Jessica, Janice, uh, Don, and Lincoln. <laughs> You're now members of this church. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. As we come to our prayer time this morning, I invite you to take a look at the prayer concerns that are listed in our bulletin. Uh, a few special prayer concerns this morning. As, as you can tell, Susan is not here this morning. Susan's father... Uh, Charles Krause passed away this week after a, a short illness. So continue to remember Susan and their entire family. Um, the funeral will be at two o'clock today over at Trinity. Um, both of our choirs will be singing uh, together. So it would, it's gonna be a good celebration of, of Charles's life at two. I also invite you to remember Chris Coyer, uh, who was a former member of this church. Chris's father passed away this week. So remember Chris and their family. Are there other prayer concerns or praises to lift before our church family? Louise? The Myers family. Yes. Will. Yes, Ken. Uh, I have a praise report. Uh, Tina and I were blessed with our first great grandchild on Friday, Levi James Maine. He was eight pounds. 20 and three quarter inches long. Wow. All right. Congratulations. And anyone there wanted to know he's going to be a great grandfather. Great grandfather. Amen. Amen. Any others? Oh, goodness. No. Who is Pam, this? Pam Hooks, uh, one of our church members in a car wreck this week. Miss Bobby. Remember Mindy Figueroa. Uh, I don't know if you uh, saw Facebook, but Mindy uh, updated everyone that her, her cancer has returned and she's going to be facing some treatments. So keep Mindy in your prayers. Behind you. Gary's aunt died, Elizabeth Ann Shelton. Gary's aunt, uh, Elizabeth Shelton, passed away. We'll remember that family. Wanda. Wanda Taylor's son, Eric Hughes, uh, was burned in a work uh, accident. Uh, Kathy? The family of Charlie Allison. Uh, there was another. Was there another? Did I get everybody? Steve and uh, some of the, the band, they got to, to play at Camp Joshua last night. About 100 kids uh, just fired up for Christ. It's always a praise. Any others this morning? Betty Lewinsky's family. Betty Lewinsky's family. 
Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we are just again, just so grateful to be in your house this morning, Lord. Uh, we come with many things on our hearts and minds today, Lord, but, but most of all, we, we just pray for uh, just uh, your presence with us here. Uh, God, uh, so many things are, are vying for our attention, Lord, and distracting us, God, but we come now just to, to put our attention on you, uh, Lord, to, to focus on you, Lord, uh, a word that you would uh, speak to us, God, that uh, direction that you would, you would nudge us towards. Uh, Lord, we just come... Uh, seeking you. God, we come lifting the concerns of our hearts, Lord, those that we've mentioned out loud, those that, are, uh, that need healing, that need um, just divine intervention, God, we, we pray for them. Lord, for the, the needs that we've kept to ourself, uh, Lord, the needs that are deep down in our hearts that we, we share with no one, God, you still know those needs. And Lord, we pray for, uh, for your peace in all things. God, we come now uh, as we enter into this holy week, God, Help us to, to live this week, to remember what you did for us, God. The triumphal entry, Lord, but to remember that Good Friday is coming, Lord, and remember the great sacrifice that you made for us. But Lord, we look with anticipation to Easter, knowing that you are still alive and well, and, and you died and rose again on our behalf. Lord, we are so thankful for what you have done for us. God, lead us in this time of worship. Continue to draw our, our hearts and minds closer to you. We ask all things, these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I watched as Will walked down with a sense of relief on his forehead. <laughs> you made it. <laughs> oh, you think you could have preached? No. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I thought I'd give him a chance. This is going to be Will Sunday to preach. You know, he usually preaches on the last Sunday of every month. And then, of course, everything going on in, in the church with uh, Susan's dad and Susan not being able to be here. We had to change a few things around. And it's been a busy week. It's been a busy week. And next week's going to be a busy week. But hopefully it's going to be a week that we're going to remember what God has done for us. You know, people are quick to change their opinions. It's not just women. <laughs> right? Men change their minds also, don't they? We remember those famous words of the 2012 election. I was actually before it, for it before I was against it. Isn't that how we are at times? For many, once it begins to touch our pocketbooks or once it begins to touch our families or it begins to touch our opinions, then we change and it means something. This past week, one of the politicians who adamantly opposes Obamacare announced his family is going on Obamacare. He had just said that every word of Obamacare will be removed if he becomes president. Well, I guess not every word's going to be removed. In our scripture today, in short, six days, those words in Jerusalem, holy Jerusalem, changed. They went from Hosanna, loud Hosanna, to crucify him. Six days. The people went from hailing Jesus as a king to seeing him as a criminal worthy of execution. The people moved from a celebration to a downright hate in six days. I had no doubt that the people on the street during the time of Jesus' ministry had a thought about who Jesus of Nazareth was. 
Some people saw him as a rabbi or a teacher or as a great prophet. Other people saw him as John the Baptist or Elijah. Simon Peter said, you are the Messiah, the son of God, whatever that meant. And I have no doubt that everyone in this holy place known as Midway United Methodist Church has some opinion about Jesus. It may actually change from day to day. As challenges come our direction. Some people in this room probably see him as a great teacher. Other people see him as a martyr. Eventually, it's our hope that everyone in this room and around the world will see him as the king of kings, the Lord of Lord, the king of their lives. Actually, that was the intent of the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all wrote their Gospels intending to help the people formulate an opinion about what it means to see Jesus as king. John actually says this in chapter 20, verse 31. He says that these words are written down so you might believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and in the very act of believing, have a real and eternal life in the way he personally revealed it. In other words, every passage of the Bible was to tell us who Jesus is. Every story is to tell us about our relationship to Jesus and how it should affect our lives. And for John, it was a love affair between us and God. So my question to you today is who is your king? Who is your king? This morning, we've heard the holy city sung We've waved the palm branches. There is an excitement in the air as we sing hallelujah, as we sing. And it's Palm Sunday as a day of jubilee. But it's only six days from the crucifixion. Holy Week did not actually begin in Jerusalem. It began in a place called Bethany. It began up the road from Jerusalem in, in the home of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus of Simon the leper. It began in a village across the Kindron Valley, which was used as, as a place of child sacrifice in the Old Testament and a garbage dump in the New Testament. It happens in the village just above the Mount of Olives where Jesus will pray for each one of us. Holy Week will end on the other side of the Kindred Valley. A cross will be put up outside the city gates. It was in Bethany, it was in Bethany where Jesus asked for that donkey. Do you remember the other time when Jesus rode the donkey? Anyone? That's, that's a guesstimate. We don't know if he rode a donkey at Bethlehem or not. We don't know. Actually, it's a quick question. We, we don't have another place in the Bible where it says Jesus rode a donkey. Reminds me of the 16-year-old boy who, promised, who was promised a car if he would cut his hair, if he kept his grades up, and if his room was stayed clean. And his grades were great, his room was clean, and he answered his dad, said, well, Jesus had long hair. And his dad said, yeah, and Jesus walked everywhere he went. <laughs> From what we read in the Bible, Jesus walked everywhere he went. Even to get to Jerusalem from Galilee, a 90, 90 mile trip, he walked. So why now is it so important for this donkey to come into the scene? I want you to think back on your biblical history. King David did not ride a white horse in the battle. If you read your history, he rode a donkey. A donkey had sure footing in the rocky roads of Palestine. 
Following David, all the kings in the David and David's line rode donkeys. Everyone knew that riding a donkey into Jerusalem meant a king was coming. For Jesus, for Jesus preaching for three years, the kingdom of God is coming. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and follow me. He was preaching for three years. You are to love your neighbor. And now he's riding a donkey, making a political statement. Your long-awaited king is coming. The Messiah is coming. Soon the slavery will be ended, or so the people thought. Now, in that day and time, it was commonplace. When a king arrives, you would throw off your coats and put them on the ground. This was during the time of Passover. During the time of Passover, people took the palm branches and they swept out their homes of all the yeast in the homes. And so on this occasion, they took those palm branches and began to wave them. And they began to shout a victory psalm, a psalm that was, was sung when David came into Jerusalem. From, from Psalm 118. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Pharisees were listening to all this commotion that was going on. And they wanted the people to be quiet. Shh. Sort of look like you do to me every once in a while. Shh. Yeah. Just hush. Rome has big ears. Passover is not a time to stir up Rome. The religious folks are afraid of an uprising. But Jesus says if the rocks were silent, if, if they were silent, the rocks themselves would cry out. What we don't know from, from the Bible reading, but what we know from his, history is there were two other processions going on during the same time. During this exact same time as Jesus was coming in from Bethany. From the north, King Herod Antipas was coming into Jerusalem. Same time, same day. He was an adulterer. He was the murderer of, 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 of John the Baptist. He was the son of Herod the Great, the one who killed the innocents in, in Bethlehem. Herod is entering Jerusalem from his palace just outside of Bethlehem, not on a donkey, but in a royal chariot. At the same time, Jesus is coming in on a donkey. And from the west, Pontius Pilate is coming into Jerusalem. Rome's man, a protectorate of Judah, coming into Jerusalem with over a thousand troops. It was his job to keep the order during the Passover. It was his job to make sure that the high priest doesn't let the Passover go to his head. Friends, the message the Bible's trying to tell us in all this is, who's going to be king of your life? Is it going to be the puppet king, Herod? Is it going to be the king, Pilate, the, the protector of Judah? Or, is he, or are you going to follow the King of Kings, the Lord of Lord, Jesus Christ? Which is going to be your king? You know, there will always be Pilots. There will always be Herods. There will always be Stalins. There will always be Hitlers. There will always be Husseins. There will always be Clintons. There will always be Bushes. There will always be Obamas. One person's heroes is another person's terrorist. When this preacher leaves, another preacher will come in. Maybe you'll listen to him. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll listen to me. Maybe you won't. But we need to decide daily. We need to decide hourly, minute by minute, who we're going to follow. Who's going to be your king? Some people may think that Jesus was naive. Jesus kept on saying, love your enemy. Yeah, right. Wars happen. It's only after thousands die that we begin to understand maybe there was some sense in 
making love and not war. We're going to go through that week. It's Monday. Jesus goes to the temple and he sees the bad religion taking place. The temple Gentile core is where the Gentiles can discover and worship God. And in that place, the shopkeepers begin setting up shop and they begin to sell the temple coins to the poorest of the poor. Now, there's a charge to have your prayers read at the temple. The high priest and the chief priests charge the temple tax, one shekel, one day's wage. And it must be in a temple shekel. But in order to buy a temple shekel, you had to give 20 of the other shekels to buy that. They were cheating the people. But not only that, you don't just give the money, you had to buy a pigeon if you are a poor person that has sacrificed. A pigeon was supposed to cost only one day's wage, but they were charging a 20 days wage for these certified pigeons. Certified pigeons, sort of like a certified used car. The poor is being whipped off and the high priest is allowing it to happen. And this bad religion is angering Jesus and he screams and he pushes. And at least one of the gospels says he uses a whip to push the shopkeepers out of the temple. The shopkeepers are a little upset about this. You see, this was the biggest shopping day of the year. They were losing a fortune. This Jesus fella is costing us money. And then comes Tuesday. Tuesday is the day of hypocrisy. It's the day when Jesus calls their religion a whitewashed tomb. You've seen it. The priest who abused children in the name of God. The TV evangelist who worked on our emotions to get money or our churches that use funds not to help the poor, but instead to build big monuments to themselves. Now it's Wednesday. Wednesday is the day that Jesus has his last supper, not the last supper with the disciples, the last supper with his friends. He goes back to Bethany and he goes to Simon's house. And there in Simon's house, a woman comes and and pours oil on his feet and on Jesus' head. Again, if you go back in your biblical history, you'll see that this is how a king is anointed as a king. Usually the high priest will come and anoint oil on his head. But in this day, Jesus is anointed not by a priest, not by the religious establishment, but by a woman Maybe even a prostitute. Now it's Thursday. Jesus eats his Passover Seder meal with his disciples. They're in the upper room. He takes some of the unleavened bread that's there before him. He says, take, eat, this is my body. And then he takes one of the four cups of wine that's used at the Passover. And he lifts it up and says, this is my blood. And then he gets down and he washes the the feet of the disciples as they argue about which one is most important. And then he heads out to the garden and there he prays, Lord, if you would let this cup pass from me, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. The book of John has things a little bit different. The book of John says that that Jesus is the king. So he tries to show Jesus as in light of, of the Jewish Passover. Matthew, Mark, and Luke try to show the humanity of Jesus. John is trying to show the strength of Jesus. So in John chapter 18, verse three, he says, so Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priest and the Pharisees. And they came with lanterns and torches and weapons. Now the Greek language does not say police came to arrest Jesus. The Greek language said a cohort came to arrest Jesus. A cohort is between 200 and 600 soldiers. 
Jesus must have been one dangerous dude. And then this happens, according to John. Jesus answers the cohorts looking for Jesus of Nazareth, saying, I am he. Again, the English language doesn't do it justice. For you see, in the Greek it says, ego ami, which means I am. I am. Do you remember another time in the Bible? Remember your, your biblical history. Exodus chapter 3. Moses is being asked to go before Pharaoh to let the people go out of slavery. And Moses asked God, God, people are going to ask, which God is sending me? What is your name? And what did God say his name was? I am. I am that I am. My goodness, all this stuff is happening and is fulfilling what we've heard throughout history, isn't it? Throughout Wednesday night, Jesus is tried by the Sanhedrin. It's headed by the high priest, the same one that's losing thousands of dollars of money because of what Jesus did in the temple. And then he sent to Pilate. Remember, Pilate is the Roman-held government there in, in, in Palestine. The charge against Jesus is insurrection against Rome. This is what the people had hoped he would do. It is an insurrection against Rome. And Pilate asked him three times, are you a king? Now, Jesus acknowledged he's a king, but he says his, his kingdom transcends the Roman land. His, his reign is in the kingdom of God inside the hearts of people. He says, yes, I'm a king, but I'm not the Roman king. The questions are still the same over 2,000 years later. Who's on trial? Is it the high priest? Is it Pilate? Is it the, well, is it you and I? Who's on trial? Who's the king of your life? Pilate actually tried to stop the crucifixion. Surely that counts for something. He had Jesus flogged. He had a purple robe placed on him. He had a thorn of, of crown put on top of his head. Made Jesus look the fool. And then he brings him out to all the people so the people could see this Jesus character. This pitiful picture of a man beaten to a pulp. Surely they will say that's enough. But the same crowd who six days earlier had said, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. It's now saying, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. We are on trial. Who's the king of your life? We are Pilate. If the company you work for is doing something harmful and you know it, will you speak up against them? We are the crowd. If, 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 if you know a change needs to occur, and if you don't stand up and do the change, aren't you guilty? Pilate knows he should set Jesus free, but he does not pass the test. He's guilty. The crowd knows Jesus should go free, but they do not pass the test. They're guilty. Pilate can wash his hands as much as he wants to wash his hands, the guilt's still there. I can wash my hands as much as I want to wash my hands, my guilt is still there. You can wash your hands as much as you want to wash your hands and the guilt would still be there. There's so much more to the story of Holy Week, the kiss of Judas, the blackmailing of Pilate, the two thieves on each side. But the whole question is, who is your king? Now it's Friday.
thing I want us to understand about the crucifixion in light of the Passover. See, John is a little bit different. John says in verse 14 of chapter 19, it was about noon on the day of preparation when Jesus was crucified. Now, the other gospels say it was the first day of the Passover at 9 a.m., so it's a little bit different in John. But again, I want you to remember your biblical history. In Exodus chapter 3, God calls Moses to Pharaoh and says, let my people go. And he goes to Pharaoh and he asks Pharaoh to let God's people go. Nine times, it doesn't work. Finally, there's one last plague that is brought before Pharaoh. And then he tells the people that they are to slaughter a lamb per household and use a hyssop branch to put blood on the doorpost and on the lintel of the door and the angel of death would pass over them. You remember that story. Then Jesus tells the people to remember this day always. In Jesus' day, the day of preparation, the day before Passover is the day that the lamb is brought to the temple to be blessed. John said that Jesus was brought to the temple at noon. Or excuse me, he was crucified at noon. Guess what time of the day of preparation the lamb was supposed to be brought to the temple? At noon. John's a little bit different because he's trying to tell us Jesus is the Passover lamb. He's going to save his people. One last thing. Remember as Jesus is on the cross, the soldiers take vinegar and they hand it up to Jesus to drink. Do you remember how they did it? On a hyssop branch. What type of branch did the Hebrews use to put the blood on the doors? A hyssop branch. Jesus is taken to Golgotha, to Calvary, where he's crucified. And there, in all languages, it is written, the king of the Jews. It's as if Pilate himself is saying, Jesus is the king of the universe. What kind of king would give up his life as his first royal act? Jesus on a cross. We're responsible. We're guilty. It's not just the Hosannas. Jesus is the Passover lamb. Jesus is the one who, sla who saves us from our slavery. Are we going to follow Jesus? today as a way for us to symbolize that we are responsible. We've got a cross before us. And this cross is a reminder of what Jesus did for us. I invite you as we sing our next hymn to bring a nail. Place it in the cross as a reminder, he did it for you and he did it for me. Let's stand. Praise God for this Sunday. For it's a Sunday that reminds us just what Jesus did for us. And next week, next week, we're going to be replacing these with flowers as a way of a symbol of Jesus rising from the dead. Amen? Amen? Go forth from this place knowing that God loves you. I invite you to greet our newest members of the church. I'm going to ask y'all if y'all just be up here so people can say hello to you and, 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 and greet you. Go forth. Be a blessing. Go forth remembering Jesus loves you. Amen.